we're going to create a breakout clone using Construct 2, free software for creating HTML files, downloadable at scria.com. I have started it up. I'm going to create a new project, store it in a single file. This sheet is a little bit bigger than I need, so I'm going to change the size. 704 to 480, project properties, change the window size to match, 704 by 480. Next, I'm going to go to layers, add a couple of layers. First one, called background, will hold all the background images. The second one, called main, that'll hold all the moving images. The third one, the graphical user interface, GUI for short, will hold all the textual information. Now I'll start inserting objects. First off, a tiled background is a nice thing to add. I'm going to take this, position it in the upper left hand corner, size it to match, 704 by 480, and move this to the background layer. Next, I'll lock the background layer so I don't accidentally select this when I click on it. The active layer is now set to main, so new objects I add will be added to the main layer. Insert a bunch of objects. First sprite, load image, and load the ball. Insert a new object, another sprite. This time, I will add the paddle. Insert a new object. Add a sprite. This one will be the wall. Finally, I want to add the bricks. Now, the bricks, I've actually saved all the images in a single sprite sheet right here. Notice it's four across and three down. I'll double click. That doesn't look quite right, does it? So, down here, instead, I'll import the sprite strip. This will break the image apart for me. Four across and three down. Right, this image right here, I just, I simply do not need it. If I go back to projects, objects, I'm going to edit these animations right here. I'll delete this frame. I didn't really want that picture there. Move that around. Now, this really isn't an animated thing, so I'm going to set the speed to zero, which will effectively stop it from animating, allowing me to use this as kind of an object which will hold single images, depending on the color brick that I want. I'll rename these objects. Ball. wall, and brick. All right. Next, notice the brick is 44 by 22. I want these to snap into a grid-like pattern, so view snap to grid. Go back and I'll change the width to 44 and the height to 22. So now it'll snap into various locations. I'm going to take the wall, make that large enough to cover the left side. Now if you hold down control and click, you can actually drag another wall off. I'll move it right here. I'll drag one more wall. Change the angle to 90. Rotate it in place. Move it up here. Drag it a little bit larger. Next, I want to arrange a nice colorful pattern of bricks. Rather than change the animation frames one by one, I'll set up kind of a pseudo tile editor. I'll move this into the margin, hold down control, create a whole bunch of these. And what I'll do is I'll change the initial frame on each one. So I can have my orange bricks, my yellow bricks, green bricks, light blue, dark blue, violet, and gray. So now I can just click on one, control and drag it into place, or I could click on a whole bunch, control and drag it into place. For time purposes, I'll just make a bunch of copies of this. Grab all these. Great. Our field is set up. Next, we'll add some interactivity to this. 
Welcome back. This is part two of the breakout tutorial using Construct 2. Right, last time we set this up, I don't really need these white bricks here, so first I'll get rid of them so they don't overlap. Now, one of the great things about Construct is you can add pre-programmed behaviors to send you some time in coding. For instance, the walls, I'm going to right-click, go down to Behaviors, I'm going to add a solid behavior because the walls are solid. The ball, I'm going to add a couple of behaviors as well. Balls will also act like solids, but the balls will also travel under their own velocity. So I'm going to add a bullet behavior. Bricks are kind of interesting. I'm going to add a couple of behaviors to them as well. They also act as solids. However, I want them to disappear in a cool way, so I'm going to add the fade behavior as well. Now the paddle, I could treat that like a solid as well, but I want some more customability, so I will play with that later in the event sheet. Um, going down to ball, 400 pixels a second is a little bit too quick. I'll set that to 200. I want the ball to fall a little bit under its own gravity. I'll set that to 3 pixels per second per second. And I do want it to bounce off of solids. So I'll change that to yes. Now the bricks, I don't want them to fade right away, so I'll switch that to no. I want them to fade out away quickly when they do, so I'll set that fade out time to half a second. Now, under the event sheet, I don't really have much to interact with yet. I'll do one more thing. Right-click, insert a new object. I'm going to insert the mouse, which means it'll let me interact with my mouse. It's now available. Okay, I'm going to add events. The first event I'm going to add is what's well, going to happen every run of the game loop, every tick. The action I'm going to add, I'm going to take the paddle, I'm going to set its X coordinate to, well, I'll go over here. If you mouse over this window, you get access to the expressions. I'm going to set the paddle's X coordinate to whatever's the mouse's X coordinate is. This means wherever I move my mouse, the paddle will go there as well. Second, if a ball collides with a brick, I want something to happen. What's going to happen? Well, a couple of things. First, I'm going to start its fading behavior, which is going to cause it to fade out. Also, when it collides with a brick, I don't want it to accidentally collide a second time. So I'm also going to say brick. I'll go down to its solid behavior, and I'll set its state to disabled. And I'll cause it to fade away. Next, when the ball interacts with a paddle, when you're playing a breakout or construct style game, well, it doesn't bounce off necessarily the way you might think it should. So whenever the ball overlaps with a paddle, what I want to do is manually set its angle of motion. Now in Construct, 270 would be straight up because the y-axis points down, 90 degrees is down, 180 is left, 270 is up. But depending on how far along the ball hits the paddle, if it hits on the left side or the right side, I want to be able to change that angle. So after testing, I found the following formula works pretty well. I'm just going to enter these manually rather than clicking on the events. It's a little bit quicker. So let's see. Paddle.width divided by 2. So what this expression does expression I've highlighted ranges from negative 1 to positive 1 depending on how far along the ball is on the paddle. Alright, is there anything else I need to do? Let's test. Look at that. So notice if I hit the ball on the left side of the paddle it has a very left angle. If I hit it in the middle it goes up. If I hit it in the right it goes to the right. So now our breakout game is interactive. That's fantastic. But part of the fun of Breakout is adding things like power-ups. So, we'll do that next. Woohoo! Welcome back to part three of the Construct 2 tutorial, Creating a Breakout Clone. In this part, we're going to add some special effects specifically to the ball, and we're going to represent the different states using different images for the ball. 
So first thing I'm going to do is right click and edit animations on the ball. I'm going to add some new animations. I'm going to add a total of five different states the ball can be in. Say I'll open an image and a small image. Let's see. The next animation, I'll use a large one. This next animation, this will be my fireball effect, so a red ball. This last animation, I'll load a blue colored ball. And I'll rename each of these. So I'll name the first one normal. The next one I'll rename as small. Next one I'll rename as large. I'll call the next one fire. This last one, rename as through the through ball. All right. Like a way to easily access these, so I'll add some quote cheat codes. I'm going to insert a new object, keyboard object. Head over to the event sheet, and over to keyboard. If key is pressed. Click one. In that case, I want to switch the state of the ball. Set the animation to normal. Let's see, I'll select this whole event by clicking on the left. Copy, paste, 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 paste. And I'll just edit all these real quick. Key two. Key three. Key four. these I want to activate. Let's see this small animation. It'll just be harder to hit, make it more challenging. The large animation, it's kind of like a bonus. Fireball animation, my personal favorites. It's going to cause bricks to explode. And this last one, the through animation. Instead of bouncing off a brick, it's going to continue going through. All right, next I need to add some more sprites. Let's see. Insert new object, sprite. Let's see, this is again going to be from a sprite strip. So I'm going to add my explosion. It was three across and four down. I can get rid of this first one. I'm going to speed up the animation. Make that maybe 18 frames a second. The sprite I'll rename. Explosion. I'm going to add an effect. I'm going to make it additive. It makes it look more like a real explosion. The black kind of disappears, and all you see is the white highlighted part. Let's see. I'm just going to add a behavior. I'm going to have it fade out, which might not make a whole lot of sense, but it's an easy way to make it self destruct without adding a second event. So, after waiting for a second after it appears, it'll fade out and it'll destroy itself. The animation will be finished by then. Alright, edit animations. I'm going to take this and duplicate it. And down here, I'm going to import a new sprite strip. Duplicate it just so I don't have to set the speed and everything to be the same. This time, notice I'm adding a blue one. Get rid of all my red frames just by pressing delete. All right, I should rename these as well. Oops, not rename this, but edit animations. Rename this as red. Rename the other one as, you guessed it, blue. All right, next, when the ball hits a brick, not only do I want to destroy the brick, but I want it to blow up if it's in fire mode. So I'm running out of time on this one, so we'll go on to part four next. Welcome back. This is part four of the Construct 2 Breakout Clone Tutorial. We're going to finish adding the special effects to the ball right now. Going back over to the event sheet, our event sheet's going to get pretty large, so we're going to start adding groups to help us organize things. If I right-click and go to Add Group, it's going to help us. Let's see. The first group I'll call Ball brick collision. 
We're going to move that up here. I'm going to make this a sub-event. I'm also going to add another group. Just press G. This one's going to be called uh, Cheat Codes, I guess. It's more like making our debugging a little bit more efficient. I'm going to put it down here. I'm going to take all these events and just click and drag so they become sub-events here. So I don't have to look at them. All right, next, if the ball collides with a brick, I want to add a sub-event here. What do I want to happen? Well, it depends. I want to check if a particular animation is playing to check if the ball is in a certain state. For instance, if the ball is currently a fireball. And if it is, what am I going to do? Well, the brick that just collided, since this event selects a particular brick, I can ask that brick to create another object. What kind of object? An explosion, of course. I'm going to set that to occur on the very top level, the GUI level. And I don't want to see the brick fade. I just want it to leave right away. So brick, I'm going to say destroy yourself. All right, it's that easy. Now, another thing you might want to do, just so all the explosions don't look exactly the same, I'm going to add another action. I'm going to say explosion. I'm going to rotate it some random amount, some random number of degrees. All right. Next, I also want to add an effect for my through ball when the ball is that blue color. So I'm going to add another sub event. This will be triggered when which animation is playing? The through animation is playing. All right. So just like before, copy these and paste them down. A couple of things are going to happen. Now, notice I have two explosions. By default, the red one is selected, but I'm going to add a little bit of code that's redundant just to make it clearer to understand. Set animation to red. Copy that. Paste it down here. I'm going to say edit. I'll set animation in this case to blue. Blue colored ball is going to spawn a blue colored explosion. Now, in this case, something different is going to happen. I want the ball to continue going through the bricks. So, in other words, I want the ball to not change its direction after collision. So, here's what I'll do. I'm going to move this event towards the bottom, and I'm going to add a new piece of information to the ball. I'm going to add an instance variable. I'm going to call it direction. And at the end of each loop, add action, ball, I'm going to set the instance variable direction to, let's see, I don't remember what it's called, so I'll go over to objects with expressions, ball, angle of motion. There we go. So it's going to store its previous direction, and should the through animation be playing, I'm actually going to, at this point it's collided, the ball has changed, I'm going to set it back to its previous, so, ball set angle of motion. Remember I create an instance variable called direction. This will just set it to its last known direction in this case. Alright, let's try it out, shall we? Okay, it's bouncing. Press 1, nothing happens. I'll press 2, remember that's my small ball. Press 3, that's the large one. Ooh, that's fun. Press 4, I get a nice explosion effect. Press 5. Wow, that is an awesome ball. Alright. Still want to add a little bit to the red explosion. Uh, when the ball is red, I wanted to do more than just destroy one ball. I wanted to destroy I wanted to destroy all the bricks around the one that it hits. So I'll need a kind of a helper sprite. I'll do that in the next tutorial. But the explosions are well on their way.